at this beautiful place in history with the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, there's an amazing history on this spot. Oh, I am so excited to be here. It is a gorgeous day. We are on sandbar leading into the Lake Champlain Islands. And of course, we have a great sign here that talks about the Lake Champlain Islands. And one of the first stops for Samuel de Champlain as he came down here in 1609. These islands have a great history. And we know them as South Hero, Grand Isle, North Hero, and you hear that name, Hero. So how did it get those names right. of, of Hero? Well, the, the islands were granted to heroes of the American Revolution, most specifically some heroes of the Green Mountain Boys. This place that we're standing right now, the sandbar, has always interested me. I've driven across it as a kid. How is it built? Why is it here? I don't know enough. So we called the South Hero Historical Society and, and invited some friends over. So who do we have first? So we have Ron, we have Ron Phelps, who many generation resident here of South Hero, going back to before statehood, I think. Uh, Ron, how, how did this get started? What was this and, and how did you guys build it? Well, originally this was just a sandbar that was you couldn't pass through here in the wintertime or in the summer because it was just a natural sandbar. And the residents of the town got together and started building a road. What, is, what do you mean sandbar? It was just the sand that was sticking up out of the lake? In places, yeah. Real shallow water. And the, the folks got together and they donated their time and started building rocks and making it passable for most of the year. They started on the other end of the sandbar called the Whit, so called the Whittemore Road over there where the big brick house is on the east side. And they started building a they call it a corduroy road, which was made out of logs. And they built a bridge, originally a wooden bridge, that was not passable year round because the water was so high, the ice would tear it out in the spring, they'd have to rebuild it every year. My family built a house on the other end because my grandfather was the toll keeper and lived in the toll house for the Sandbar Bridge Company. And so he lived, lived there and just sat on his porch and took tolls? There was an arm that came off the porch down across the road and there was a sign there that said how much the tolls were, so much for swine, so much for horses, and he'd collect that toll and raise the arm up and let the people go by. It's amazing, and then that happened until 1907? Approximately 1907, yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's when the state took it over? The state took the sandbar over, yes. Right. Any, any other uh, stories you want to share? Well, one story has it that before this was all done, my grandfather, or my great-grandfather, and other friends were headed towards South Hero by boat, <coughs> and they met a bear swimming in the water. The bear managed to get onto their boat. They did not jump off. The bear stood on the boat and waited for them to roam the shore. <laughs> what? Is that a real story? That's a real story. That's amazing. Well, Ron, thank you so much. You're quite welcome, sir. Well, as you can see, there's a rich family history here, as, as there is everywhere in Vermont, and, and it's so exciting to drive across this causeway on a, on a daily basis almost, but I look forward in the future to exploring the islands more. We'll do that and more at this place in history.